whole walk with you. I love you. But I hate you! Hey everyone, I'm just finishing up the edits on this video and I realized it's a lot longer than I anticipated. But if you're someone who makes fishing videos and you want to record underwater footage or it's something that you've thought about wanting to do, I'd encourage you to watch this whole video because I have tips spread throughout this whole video that will save you a lot of money and frustration. But if you just want to skip to the good parts and see the ending, I will put a timeline in the description where you can uh, just uh, go to any section you want on this video. Everybody, enjoy the video. Hey everyone, my name is Randy and you're watching Gold Midwest Fishing where we talk about fishing, camping, and technology. And today we're talking about this piece of technology, the underwater camera. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank everyone for watching my videos. I've always been the guy behind the camera, so when I started this channel, I had to step out in front of the camera. And I'm a bit uncomfortable on camera, but I've been doing this for just over a year now. I think I'm starting to loosen up a little bit, starting to feel more confident. If you liked any of my videos last year, I can't wait for you to see what I got lined up this year. I got a whole bunch of awesome videos I'm working on, so uh, hopefully you'll come back and check those out. Okay, let's get right to the point. The only way we're going to record 4K video on these underwater cameras is to use an action camera, something like this. This is the GoPro Hero 5 Black because these cameras will not record in 4K. The setup I'm going to show you should work with just about any underwater camera. So if you thought AquaView came out with a new 4K camera, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. For those of us that make fishing videos and like to record our underwater footage, I think these camera companies have really failed us in this area. All right, let me explain why this setup is probably your best option right now. So there are ways to record off most of these cameras, but the quality of the footage you get is going to be so low that it's, uh, in some cases, it's almost unusable. You know, the other option is taking an action camera like this GoPro, putting it on a long stick and, you know, putting it in the water doing it that way or attaching it to a string and just lowering it overboard but you can't tell what you're filming when you're doing that so by attaching the GoPro to one of these cameras here you can actually see what you're recording on the screen of the AquaView and record the video on the GoPro alright so that's basically it you connect the GoPro to one of your AquaView cameras and record it that way so now I'm just going to show you how I actually connect it to the cameras the settings I use on my GoPro and then we're going to go take it out to the lake and I'm going to show you a real world comparison side by side the footage I got from here compared to the footage I'm getting from my AquaViews. All right, you might be considering buying one of these cameras. So before we head out to the lake, we're going to go over all your options of different cameras you can use to buy, uh, especially for recording videos and why it's so frustrating. So if you've been to the store lately looking at new TVs, you'll see that they come in different varieties. The standard these days seems to be 4K, which is going to be uh, 3840 by 2160 pixels. Okay, then you also have your 1080p TVs, which are going to be uh, 1920 by 1080. Then you got your you know, 720 TVs, which will be uh, 1280 by 720. And if you want to go you know, all the way back to like 1980, those old those square TVs, uh, they're generally around uh, 640 by 480 on the pixel count. It's pretty low resolution there. When I make fishing videos, I normally record in 4K. Uh, sometimes I do 2K, which is going to be uh, 2560 by 1440. And when I actually upload to YouTube, I usually upload it as a 2K video. That way I can take my 4K and actually um, zoom in and out of it, crop it, and without loss of uh, quality. This video I'm making in 4K, so you can actually compare the differences between the qualities of the GoPro and the video coming out of these AquaViews. All right, let's see what AquaView has to offer for their cameras. Uh, they categorize them nicely, so we'll start with the HD versions. They have four different cameras, and they start around $600, and the top model is going to be $1,000. Uh, the HD models, all the cameras have a 1080p output, so that's pretty good. The funny thing is the screens on them are actually less resolution than that. So you only get the 1080p if you do the video out of those models. On the back sides, they all have a HDMI output, which is going to be a cable that looks like this. 
and it's made to hook into a TV. So if you have like a fish house with a, a flat screen bolted to the wall, you can connect this into the back of your AquaView and the other end into the TV and it should see the picture on the TV without any additional cables. Now the battery life on these HD models runs anywhere from seven or eight hours and all the way down to two and a half hours on the, the highest end model. But AquaView says they do have a power saving mode on these high end models, which will give you up to six hours. Fortunately, they don't actually tell you what the power saving mode does. They seem to uh, kind of forget those little details when they market this thing. So I don't know if that means it's in standby or it just dims down the screen or what it does. If you can actually use it in power saving mode, they, they don't explain any of that. So I wouldn't expect it to last very long if you get the uh, higher end, you know, $1,000 model, but you will get a nice, uh, crystal clear screen on it. Next in the lineup is the 715 series. I have the 715C, which C just means color. Uh, so this one right here, it's one of their cheapest models. It's only $300. Now really the main difference between this one and the HD models is the resolution coming off the camera and the screen is a little bit lower resolution too on here. Uh, I actually have, this one's kind of the old, little bit older model, has the fish camera. They now have the new XD cameras. And I bought this, used it one year, and uh, tried taking it out <laughs> was it last year or this, it was this year, I think. And the uh, screen was a little bit foggy on it. And I don't know, I, I tried drying it out and everything. I couldn't figure out exactly what was wrong with it. So when I called Aquaview, they said, pretty much the only solution is replacing the whole camera, which is $150. And uh, they said it was probably my fault because sometimes the cables get cut up and water drains in there. and I said I only used it a few times. Cables are looking great, but they, yeah, it's my fault. I have to buy a new one. So, so I asked them, hey, can I just upgrade to that XD camera? And I thought maybe I'd get a little higher resolution. And uh, nobody at the company seemed to know. So I eventually got to somebody that said, uh, no, same, same resolution. The only difference in cameras is that it has a different housing on it. So it looks a little different and that's about it. The good news about these is that the battery life is supposed to last about 10 hours. So it's got the best battery life of them all. And unlike the HD models that have an HDMI out, this one has an RCA cable out, which is right here. I have an adapter in there now, but it's right there. And then that works with one of these yellow RC cables for video. Just plug it in there and then you can plug it into the, if you have RC cables on the back of your TV, that works. All right, that brings us to their micro line. Currently consists of the Stealth and the Revolution. They used to have some other models, but it looks like they discontinued those. They're going to run from about $230 up to $450. I have the Micro Revolution Pro right here. And the regular Revolution doesn't have a DVR. The Pro has a DVR built into it. So that's why I got the Pro, because I wanted the uh, built-in DVR. Now the resolution on the Stealth, it's about the same as this one here at uh, 648 by 488. So not very good. Like I said, we're talking our old school TVs from 1980. That's about how good a resolution you're gonna get there. Uh, the Revolution Pro though, I got uh, 960 by 576. So it's a little bit better, you know, not great, but it's <laughs> at least better than these. And that 960 by 576 is what they advertise on their website. The actual, when I checked the uh, video I got off of this, it was actually 720 by 480. So I don't know if it's just an older model or if the actual, when you record, it's less than the actual screen that's on it. So not really sure there, but again, not real high quality. Now the battery on these micros last about six hours, which, which ain't too bad. Um, sometimes I'm in the lake longer that, and I could use a little bit longer battery life, but overall I'll accept six hours on this one. And like the 715 here, it uses these uh, RCA video out ports to export the video off of it. Or uh, like I said, it also has an internal uh, SD card or memory, about eight gigabytes. And since the video is pretty low resolution, you can actually record quite a few bit, uh, videos on that eight gigabytes. Just uh, show you what you use here. Um, it's got, it comes with this little power cord, a USB adapter with a, an RCA cable, and then a magnetic charger. You can put the, this magnetic charger on the AquaView, put this end in your computer, and then it'll pop up kind of like an SD card or something and you can download the video files from it that way. And these micros do have a little bit smaller cameras too. You see right there, it's uh, a lot smaller than the one off of this one here. 
which I kind of like it, and the cable is a lot thinner too. What is kind of weird about this one is the plug end. Well, here, it looks like this. Then <laughs> the other plate looks like this that plugs into the wall, and you actually have to, you know, assemble it together. Then you take this here and put the USB cable in here. And then you put the magnetic charger piece onto there. And I don't, I don't know why, if it's just so they can change different plates here for different countries or what, but it's kind of annoying. So let's move on to the Markham lineup. It's not as well categorized as the Aquaviews, but we'll start with the Recon 5, which is on their lowest end, and that one's going to cost about $320. Then you got the Recon 5 Plus, which is basically the competitor to my Revolution Pro here. It's also got a built-in DVR and it's $450, so pretty much the same. When I was looking up the camera resolution, <laughs> another one of these deals where they don't give you any of that information. I looked through all the manuals, through the website, and all I could find was the display on it is 800 by 480. It doesn't tell you what the actual camera resolution is. So I'm gonna guess it's pretty similar. Uh, to their display resolution, which is close again to the, what the Revolution Pro is. So I'd say they're pretty much on par with each other. And the Recon does have an RCA video out, so it uses this cable right here. Now Markham also makes another system called a pan cam. It kind of looks pretty interesting to me. It's basically the camera without the screen or anything on it. You just place it in your ice fishing hole and it sends a Wi-Fi signal out to your phone or tablet or uh, whatever you want to use, and you can actually control it from there. And the uh, cool thing about this is you can actually record the video onto your phone or tablet, I guess. So it's another way to record. It's kind of similar to this Aquaview AV Connect, and uh, I'll uh, talk about this in a minute. All right, now we got the Markham Mission SD. So this SD is just uh, standard, which is not high definition. This one comes in around $500, and uh, the display shows 800 by 480. Again, absolutely no information on camera resolution uh, for the video output. We have no idea what it would record in. Now we move up to their HD model. It's the Quest HD, and that is about $700. This one has an HDMI output now and has a 1080p camera on it. And finally, their highest end one is the LX9. This is actually pretty cool because it's a sonar and camera built into one. So you can actually see uh, on camera what fish you're seeing on your sonar and it kind of overlaps each other. So you can kind of compare the two and see what, how uh, your sonar actually reads them. This one also has a built-in DVR, which is pretty awesome. And it is their most expensive model at $1,329. And another cool feature of this, it has looping. Kind of like uh, if you ever used a GoPro, um, if you're not sure what looping is, it basically just records over itself. So you can constantly be recording all day long. And then whenever you hit stop, it'll just record the last however minutes you have it set for. Like this can go from five minutes all the way up to maximum of the whole card. It'll record the entire card and then record over it. So I usually have it set on five minutes, record five minutes, and it'll stop and record over itself again. So whenever you hit stop, it's going to, save that last five minutes, which is really cool. Uh, for that reason alone, I'd probably consider getting this LX9. And again, with the resolution, the manual say 800 by 600. It doesn't specify whether that's a display, whether it's the camera. Um, being their highest end model, you think it'd be at least 1080 output on the camera. So, you know, for that reason, I kind of hesitate on actually buying this because you just get a low quality video again if you do record it. I guess the only way to find out is actually use it and see what happens. All right, are there other options? Of course there are. I'm sure most of you have looked on Amazon and saw these uh, cheap cameras for about $150 and wondering, are they any good? Well, to be honest with you, I have never actually used one of them, but just looking through their specs, I can kind of tell you what you're going to expect. Um, so one I actually thought looked pretty good was called the Lucky Underwater Camera. It resembles this uh, Revolution Pro a little bit. It's kind of a handheld deal with a built-in DVR. And let's go over its uh, good points first. It's got built-in DVR. It's got an external uh, SD card that you can plug in. And it's only $150. So at first glance, it looks pretty good in the picture. It looks like, wow, it's got some good features. And it even says super high resolution. <laughs> Which kind of made me laugh because right after that I saw it has 690 by 480 on the uh, pixel count, which is about 
as low as resolution you can get, but you know, super high resolution. But if I was personally gonna get one off there, that's probably the one I'd get. And one you see a lot, if you search underwater cameras, it'll pretty much fill up your screen as the IOYO. I think that's how you say it anyway. But there's several different versions of this. They got uh, pretty much from 107 to 156 dollars for you know your basic ones. Um, they come in a nice, looks like a metal carrying case. And this part kind of makes me laugh because it says the definition is 1,000 TV lines, better than 800 TV lines. So I mean that can kind of tell you right there where it's made. <laughs> and you gotta admit it's better than the 690 TV lines of the, uh, the lucky underwater camera. And if you really want to splurge on one of these IOYO ones, you can spend uh, in excess of $200 and get one with a built-in DVR. And this one still has 1,000 TV lines. And it comes with a whole bunch of accessories, which you know are pretty much useless. And there's plenty of other ones out there, but I assure you they only get worse from there. So if you want the high quality video, I'd stick with one of the name brands like AquaView or Markham. Now you can buy some of these knockoffs, but you know, the quality may not be as good. And the biggest problem I have with these is when they come from different countries is that the video file formats might be a little weird. It may not be compatible with the stuff you use. So if you live in the US, we use the NTSC file format. And most other places in the world use the PAL system, which uh, most of the like UK, New Zealand, South Africa, and much of Europe use that. So. Uh, Depending where you buy it from, it may not be set up in the right file format or it may have some weird format that you've never seen before and your computer won't even recognize. So that's just something to be aware of. You know, it might come at a cheap price, but you may not even be able to use the video you recorded, so it's kind of pointless. All right, there's a lot of info that you need to consider when buying an underwater camera, especially if you're going to use it for video recording. I tried giving you just the basics here and a quick overview of uh, some of the options you have. I also wrote a blog post on this that's going to cover all the details that you need to know. Uh, I made a nice table and put all these fish finders side by side in it, and compared all the features that are important to, uh, especially to video recording, and I just got rid of all the you know marketing fluff that you don't need to know. So it's good comparison if you're looking at buying one. You can see right there side by side. You just got to go to goldmidwestfishing.com forward slash underwater. I'll put a link right below. You can go directly to it. Uh, so if you're considering buying one of these, I'd highly recommend taking a look at that page. I'll discuss uh, in far more detail than I did here uh, what to look for when buying one. All right, let's quickly go over how we actually record the video on uh, these systems here. Now, if you have something like so the Revolution Pro or the uh, Markham Recon 5 Plus, one of those with the built-in DVR, it's super simple. All you got to do is turn it on, hit the record button, and that's all there is to it. Uh, once it's recorded, it'll save it on itself, and then you got to, you know, plug it into a computer somewhere and download the video files. Now here's a quick example of some video that I actually got off my AquaView in the uh, 720 by 480 format. Put it right down here in the corner. Uh, as you can see, I'm making this video in 4K, so this is how it compares to a 4K video. That's how big it actually is. Now, you know, I can make it fit the screen by just scaling it up and making it bigger but it's not going to improve the quality at all. It just magnifies, you know, poor quality that it already has. And, you know, fill it full screen. You know, you can see it. It's, it's kind of blurry, but, you know, I'm looking for a much better video than that. All right, if it doesn't have a built-in DVR, you're stuck with using the video out ports on your cameras. And like I said, you're either going to have an HDMI like this or an RCA video out. Now, to be able to record the video, you need a DVR or digital video recorder. And trying to find a good one is tough. I, I was trying to do that and looking, and you can buy some pretty cheap ones, but I guarantee you they're not really going to work. And the uh, resolution they actually record in are lower than what's even being output from these cameras. Some of the DVRs I found that would work are, you know, like four or $500. And they're not really the kind that you're going to bring out on the lake with you. So what most people do these days is use a uh, video game capture device. It's basically a DVR made for your video games. When people play them, they like to record them, you know, and upload them to YouTube, stuff like that. So these are good because they will record in uh, 1080 and some of them do, you know, 60 frames per second, stuff like that. So that's pretty good and they are fairly reasonable. To get one that can record in 1080, you're going to spend around $100 and, you know, 
it just goes up from there if you want to even more quality than that. All right, if you have an HDMI output on your camera, you can plug it in your camera and plug it directly into this game capture device and record it like that. If you have the RCA video out, well, you're gonna need another piece of equipment. You're gonna need an RCA to HDMI converter. So what you're gonna do is you know, plug this into your camera, the other end into the converter, out of the converter is gonna come an HDMI, and then the other end of the HDMI is gonna go into your game capture device. All right, if you're not confused yet, that converter and the capture device both need power. So you're gonna need a portable charger, preferably with two uh, USB outputs, and you're gonna to have to plug in both, <laughs> both of those pieces. So the converter is gonna be about, they're pretty cheap, about 15 bucks. The portable charger is anywhere, you know, 20 to $50, depending on how big a one you wanna get. So if you're gonna go this route, I suggest just watching a better video on that. I actually found one from uh, Nicole Stone Outdoors. Uh, really helpful, explains it well. So I'll put a link to her video down below. Uh, she has all the parts actually out and shows you how to connect them, so much better there. So now that you got your cameras, your converters, your game captures, your uh, power chargers, your cables. Oh, you can see why this is getting so frustrating. And all that to record very low quality video. I mean, come on, Aquaview, what's wrong with you? Now, if you thought that's bad, it gets even better. So when I got this one here, it does have a video out. So I thought, oh, cool, I'll just get a video, a DVR recorder. And as I just explained, I'm not dealing with that whole mess. But they had a brilliant idea. Aquaview makes this AV Connect, which I'll show you what this is. Ta-da! It's a little box that converts your video out to a Wi-Fi signal, which can go to your phone and you can just record the video on your phone. So it comes with uh, a couple of wires. This is a little alligator clips. So you can clip it to your battery or it comes with this one here, which you can wire directly in. Um, I put a little Velcro on there so I can actually just attach it right to there. You plug the power cord into here, the video out. It comes with uh, this tiny little adapter here so it can actually attach to it like that. Boom. And then when you turn it on, you just take your phone here, you pull up the uh, AquaView AV Connect app and connect it to Wi-Fi. And I'd actually show you how it works, but it crashes every time I try to pull it up. So it ain't gonna happen. So anyway, this wonderful piece of junk costs $150. All right, and after I ended up, you know, spent 300 on here, $150 on this, I'm like, yes, I'm ready to go. And here's the part that really gets me is, when I recorded it to my phone and then I uploaded it to my computer, the video was only 640 by 480 on the resolution. So just terrible resolution and only 10 frames per second. So if you make video, you know you usually record at like 30 frames per second. A lot of fishermen like to do 60 frames per second. That way they can do some slow motion shots. Well, when I'm trying to sync up my 10 frame per second video with my actual showing me fishing and stuff, you know, nothing would match up and it was kind of choppy and just looked terrible and I just consider it pretty much unusable. So to show you what it actually looks like, I'll put it down here in the corner. This is the actual size and quality of the video I got off of this, uh, <laughs> this AquaView AV Connect here. And just kind of like the other video, I can also, you know, resize it, scale it up, make it bigger so you can see it. But you know, the quality is just not there and I just, it's just unusable, so I quit using it. Now the app itself that you use to control this with, uh, looks like they put like zero money into it. Uh, the worst part is it just records onto your phone's internal storage and there's no option whatsoever to actually change it to your external you know, SD card and it doesn't even let you delete them. And when I tried to pull them off my phone onto my computer, it took me forever to even find where they were. And then once I did, it's like, ah! I, need, I need a beer. All right, let's get on with it. All right, let's put this new system to the test. Uh, so I was gonna go over the settings I use on this. And uh, being that it's gonna be underwater, I can't actually see what I'm recording. 
I'm basically going to let the GoPro make all the decisions and leave most things on auto. And the other feature I'm going to use, uh, depending on how you're going to do this, you can either, you know, hit record, send it down the hole and you're going to record everything you see. Or you can do that looping feature I talked about earlier. I usually do the five minute loop. That way when some fish comes in and you do get a bite, pull them up, um, you'll have to actually you know, pull the cord, pull this out of the water, hit the stop button, and it'll record that last five minutes or whatever you did. But you know, if you're making fishing videos and actually need the high quality, I think it's worth that little bit of inconvenience to uh, have to pull it up every time you want to record a section. You can also do longer, you know, like 20 minutes. That way, you know, if the action's hot, you can just leave it down there and, until it kind of slows down a little bit, and then pull it up when you're done and record the last 20 minutes. Or you can, you know, for that part, you can just do the whole thing and then just chop out the bits you want and you know, delete the rest and do it however you want, but uh, I usually do about five minutes. Maybe I'll do 20 if the action's doing really good. All right, how are we gonna connect these things to our camera? I got a few ideas yet. I'm not really sure if they're gonna work yet, but I got this, uh, this little piece of uh, screw and thing from uh, one of my accessories. It's kind of like clamps onto like a bike handle. It goes all the way through, so it, it should work good. Um, use the uh, GoPro case here and the Hero 5. And this one will fit right over that fin. All I gotta do is drill a hole right through this fin here, and then just put that uh, screw through it. And that should be all it takes for this one. Uh, for the revolution here, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's got a smaller piece here, and this uh, little tabs on this GoPro don't quite fit over the top of that. So I'm thinking it comes with this little weight right here. This weight just clamps on right like that. Right, pull it out here so you can see. And I'm thinking just take this and just slide it onto there. This is a little too thick, so I'm gonna have to grind it down a little bit so it'll fit first. All right, so let's do that now and get that hooked up. All right, there we have it, the final setup. And what I like about this is I just have it on the little weight that I just take it right off, clip it on. And I know what you're thinking, it's gonna fall off and never see it again. So, you know, let's see. I don't think it's gonna fall off. You know, it might become a musky bait, but other than that, I don't think this is going to fall off under just normal, easy use. I mean, especially, I mean, look at, I think we're good to go. All right, one thing I should probably mention before we get out there is uh, I wouldn't use your uh, latest, greatest camera on here just in the small chance it does end up in the bottom of the lake. Um, I got here, uh, it's an old GoPro Hero 5. This one, uh, actually this is the original, I bought this one new, but I have a couple of these. Bought them off Craigslist or Facebook, I don't know, for, um, you can get them for like 200 bucks nowadays, so not that expensive. So I'd suggest getting one you kind of dedicate to this and one you wouldn't mind using, cheaper price. You know, they they make some cheaper knockoff cameras too that can still record in 4K that, you know. Key is, you know, don't spend too much money on a camera you're gonna, you know, send to the bottom of the lake. So uh, with that said, 
Let's head out to the lake and see what we can capture. All right, I'm here at Big Carnelian Lake, just down the road from my house. And I chose this lake because, well, it's close and it's got um, really clear water and the bottoms are all over the place. So we got a like, little shallow bay here. It's only like five feet deep. Got a 68 foot hole out in the middle. So I'm gonna go around the lake here and we can test out the camera in different depths of water and uh, different areas, with different structure and see what it looks like. Now it's early March and fishing season just ended, but I can still go for some panfish. Figure while I'm out here, I might as well throw a line down. Uh, I was gonna drive out. There's still, still a good 12, 14 inches of ice, but the landing, it's all heaved up right here. And although I could probably get by it, there's some slush, it, I don't know. It looks a little iffy to me, so I think I'm gonna just take the four wheeler out and not chance it. Welcome to my ice shack. I got a couple holes drilled here into our first test. So I'm going to use the uh, AquaView Revolution Pro first. If that works good, I might break out the uh, 715. Let's see, first I got to put this cord in here. So it hangs, right? Basically, this just puts little channels. You can angle the camera at different angles. All right, let me turn the GoPro on. Make sure the settings are all where I want them to be. I don't know if I have video on here. No media, good. So with a fresh slate. I'm in 4K resolution, 30 frames per second on wide. That's my GoPro settings for that. And regular video, cool. We're only showing uh, well, from the bottom of the ice down, it's uh, about eight feet deep right here. Um, kind of in a little hole in this little bay, uh, one of the deeper spots here. So maybe the fish are hanging out here. Fish finder shows something just level on the bottom there. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's a fish. But... All right, there's that, there's that. Turn the uh, AquaView on. Recording the AquaView, recording on the GoPro. I get the auto exposure. All right, there I am. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like. It's centering down the hole. There she is. Let's see what we see. Might start off with a picture in picture here, and then uh, throughout the day, I'll just kind of switch on and off, and I won't know until I start editing this how I'm actually going to do it. But here we go, heading down the hole. Nice thick ice today. Let's see if we can't see. Uh, there's right underneath the ice. It's always kind of cool to see. If we can't find my. Oh, there's. Can we go back a little bit? There's my other hole I drilled right next to us. That's the one I could fish down. And let's see where the transducer is. There's my transducer. All right, let's go down to the bottom here and see what we see. It's only uh, eight feet deep, so. Um, all the snow on the ice also blocks a lot of the light that gets down, so when there's a lot of snow, you don't see very well. It's, it's mostly melted now, but uh, I'm not sure how much we'll actually be able to see under here. Oh, there's some weeds starting to come into view. Oh yeah. In the summertime, this is where a lot of the panfish hang out. So I would try it right now and see if we see anything in the wintertime. They may have moved out to the deeper holes. Kind of swing it around a little. Do we see any fish down there?
Somebody's driving out here. I don't see any fish. Drop right down to the bottom. Laying on bottom. See the GoPro is probably buried in the weeds. Bring it up. There's a little bit of light, but I'm thinking out in the deep holes, it's probably going to be hard to see anything. I'm kind of surprised that the water's so cloudy in the summertime, it's just crystal clear. Yeah, I'm not sure it's worth putting a fishing pole down here. It looks, looks like a ghost town down there. All right, let's reel up and try a little bit deeper spot. How'd that go? And we're back out of the water. All right, we're a little further out in the lake now. There's, a, if I kept going, there's a nice little hump, just about six feet deep, and some people like to fish around that. We're just off the edge of that hump in currently about 16 feet of water. Like I said it's below the ice, it's about 16, so probably about like 18 feet actual depth here. And I see a lot of holes drilled right around here, kind of just off the edge of this hump that's out there. So let's go check it. Test, test number two. All right, center it around the hole. Let's see what we see. Hey, you can see right through the ice. It's kind of cool. Right, let's take a look at underneath the ice. Wait, what's that? It's a bunch of weeds that floated up, touching the bottom of the ice. Hey, come on, don't fail me now. I bought this uh, Revolution. On Facebook you get a better price but every now and then it cuts out like the signal gets lost and now oh, there's something wrong with the connections or cable all right heading down currently seven feet under the ice here way down it only has 50 feet of cable on it I want to go out to that 68 foot hole but We'll never get to the bottom. All right, I'm showing pretty much on bottom on the fish finder. Kind of murky down there. I was expecting a lot clearer. And it's currently about 1.30. It's clear, sunny, beautiful. It's in the mid 30s. So there's a lot of sun shining on the ice. So this is about the best we're gonna get for getting light underneath there. All right, let's look for some fish. Currently facing northeast. Water says 39 degrees. Mm -hmm. Nice bed of weeds down there. That would be, looks like a good spot for fish to hide. Hold up just a little bit. I know the GoPro is hanging a little bit underneath this camera, so when I'm looking at it, I don't want to be putting the GoPro into the weeds. I don't actually see any, any fish on the fish finder or on the camera yet. I'm going to just scare them away when you drill the holes and stuff. So give it a minute here and see what we can see. I'm going to drop it right down into the weeds, see what happens. Stop spinning. I'm going to put it right down into the weed bed. <laughs> there, it's just literally resting on bottom. Pull it up a little bit. 
bit here. Kind of a cool view into the weeds. Now this lake does contain a lot of like smaller game fish. Uh, caught a lot of tiny northerns and some bass out of here. Uh, there are some good pan fish. Uh, people do fish crappies out here. Do pretty good. I know there's some perch. Perch I caught out here are pretty small. In the summertime we'll catch a lot of nice bluegills. So I'm hoping to see something like that on here. Alright, let's reel it up. And there's a spot in the north end I know a lot of people go for fishing crappies and panfish. So I'm going to go to that end of the lake and actually maybe throw a jig down and see if we can't manage to catch something. Or at least see something on camera. I'd like to see a fish on the camera. One thing I do like about these micros, they have this cool little reel on the back so your line doesn't get all tangled up. Here it comes, up, up, up. All right, spot number three. Uh, took a little detour going across the middle of the lake. Uh, there's a deep hole 68 feet out here and I thought, hey, that'd be kind of fun to try to see what it looks like way down that deep and see how the light uh, works. Uh, I only got 60 feet of cable on here so I stopped at uh, this says 42 feet on my depth finder right now so i'm sure at that point it'll get pretty dark anyway so let's try it out at 42 feet down turn this on all right you see me on there, there we go. Oh, come on got a big white screen on here Ugh. Well, I'm just getting a white screen on here. It's not showing me anything on the camera. Oh, these things are frustrating. I can't get it to work. I'll have to break out the other one. Whenever you go fishing, it's always good to have backups because this kind of stuff always happens. At least it does to me. All right, we got the old 715 hooked up now. This one only has 50 feet of cable compared to the 60 feet on the other one. We'll still be able to reach bottom if it's only 40 some feet. So I got her all hooked up like you saw earlier. All right, something I failed to mention earlier. There is one other way to record the video off your AquaViews. That is just to take a, another camera and point it at the screen of your AquaView and record the actual screen onto another camera. So that's what I got going now because this, this AquaView doesn't have a well, it used to have a recorder, but it doesn't work anymore. So uh, we're just going to do it that way and see what it looks like. All right, going down 40, 50 feet. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, I got to turn the. <laughs> I better turn this camera on, or ain't going to do anything. Even though I just charged this AquaView up, it's only showing one bar of battery, so hopefully it'll last long enough. I think uh, both my AquaViews need new batteries. All right, 4K wide. Hit the. Uh, record on this one all right they're all recording you can take a quick view of the fish finder there it is all right let's go down the hole i do like this has a little bit bigger cable and it's easier to control but it's also harder to put down the hole because you got to unravel it from the base oh there's bubbles coming out of it I bet there's a, that's probably why it got all fogged up to begin with. I think it leaks. All right, there's underneath the ice. A little turn around here, see if we can't see. We're just same in all directions. All right, let's head down to the bottom, see how dark it gets. Uh, I said I gotta watch my arm in the way here. I'm gonna unravel this cable. Going down. I'll tell you when I see it on the fish finder here. You can see how deep I am. All right, there it's starting to register. About 
eight feet down. Try not to move the, the aqua view here because I'm filming it, so it's kind of unraveling it where it stands. Keep going down. All right, we're approaching, there's 15 feet. Nothing but a haze right now. Kind of curious what bottom looks like. Let's see if I'm still lined up on here. Yeah, it looks like I'm <laughs> kind of get a glare off the aqua view screen, so it's not always the best way to record it either, but you know, it's better than having cables everywhere. Okay, we're about 25 feet down. Just, uh, I'll change the view here so you can quickly see what it looks like on the, on the fish finder. That's what our, <laughs> it looks like when it goes down. You can see it go all the way down. It's pretty easy to tell because it's such a big mark. It shows up nice. All right, back to filming the, the aqua view. All right, I need to interrupt here one more time. As I was editing this video, I realized the GoPro quit recording halfway down. So it never made it to the bottom of that deep hole to record what was on the bottom. I've had a few issues with my GoPros doing this where they just randomly stop recording. Um, the GoPro that was on the ice shack facing me, I had uh, a missing clip in here too where that one just decided to stop recording on its own. So maybe it's an issue with the GoPro Hero 5, not really sure, but uh, so I didn't get any footage of the bottom. I did make it down there with the aqua view where I was recording the screen of the aqua view with my camcorder, although it's really hard to see. Uh, we'll continue on there and you can see a little bit of the bottom, but uh, it's not very good footage. And I also want to mention, you saw when I started up my aqua view Revolution Pro that it had a white screen on it. Well, that never did get resolved, so it still is not working. Luckily, I was able to recover the files on it, so you're able to see them on the video. But I think that uh, that camera is pretty much dead. So now I have two aqua views I bought that have lasted me less than a year. And I'm not about to spend hundreds of more dollars on a camera that doesn't last. So I think I'm actually going to go to Amazon and buy one of those cheap cameras and uh, test one of those out, see how they do. I figure if it quits working, I'm not out, you know, five, six hundred dollars. I'm only out hundred fifty dollars. So. Uh, I'll be buying one of those soon and I'll uh, give you the review on that one. See how I like that. All right, back to the video. Oh, I'm almost showing on bottom, so. Oh, there's, here it comes into view. Boom, laying on bottom. You see it on the aqua view? It's really hard to see. There you go, there's 40, 42, 43. Go at the top of the ice about 45 feet down right now. And being such a bright sunny day, we're actually got daylight down there. I'm kind of surprised. Usually when you get this far down, you can't see much at all. Appears to be void of life. No need to fish here. There's a better view. You actually see a little something. So the question is, if you're filled <laughs> Filming a low resolution screen with a 4K camera, what kind of resolution do you get? Uh, we can't really see much here. We'll try it again. We'll move up there where it's a little bit shallower when you have more to look at and see if, um, I might actually have to close the doors on this, get a nice uh, dark in here so we can see the screen a little better. All right, let's, let's pull this thing up. Definitely a heavier feel than the other, than the other AquaView. And like I said, the cable management with this thing, it's just all over the place. All right, here comes the fishy. Up, up, up through the hole. 
you see it on the screen now. Um, said so the screen is a little foggy to begin with. So that might affect its uh, quality anyway. Oh yeah, I can see there's some water actually inside of the camera here. It's pretty much toast. Time to throw this one out, but I mean the base works fine. I think it's just the, the camera is not very good. All right, we're up on the north end now. This is whole city up here, man. There's holes everywhere. They're old anyway, because the shacks had to be off the lake uh, a week or two ago. So I can see where all the all the ice shacks are sitting out here. There's just, like flat spots all over the place. So this must be the spot. There's actually uh, kind of a little shelf that juts out from the shoreline there, and then it drops off significantly right out here. So we're kind of right on the edge of that shelf where it drops off. Hopefully some of the panfish are kind of hanging out on top of that little shelf here. And we'll put the camera down and see what we can. And I think, well, before I head in, I might drop a bait down just to see if I can attract anything. All right, spot number four. Maybe we'll actually catch some fish here. I'll send her down to the bottom and then we'll uh, get the awk of you going here. When fishing, I like to use this little tripod dealy. Um, it holds your camera cord for you so you don't have to worry about it and it'll keep it in the same spot. You just put this little rubber plug on it, it's on there and then you can just twist it and it'll uh, turn to wherever your bait is. You make a, what's called a Mopod, it's got a little electric motor on here with a remote control that you can actually turn it without it getting up but I don't need anything that fancy. All right. Let's get this set in here. Yeah, well here, I'll hit record. You can see me, hey, see me in the, <laughs> see my reflection more than anything. That ain't very good. Well, that's what you get right there. It kind of sucks, so that's not really a good way to do it either is the camera on camera. I don't know, we just have to close it up here and make it dark or something. Well, I think we'll just give up on this idea, shut this thing off. And we'll just, I got the GoPro recording, so we'll just watch on there and I'll get out my fishing gear and we'll drop a line down and see what it looks like on camera. So we're just using the little tungsten jig right there, the fake wax worm. So once we get it down there, then we gotta figure out where our bait is and turn it so it shows it. It's a crappie, bluegill, something. He's on camera, come on. This is a big bluegill. Yeah, there's a fish down there. It's going that way, turn a little bit. Ooh, 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 there's one right there, the bluegill. Ha ha, there's fish. Bite it, he's nipping at it. He's a little leery. Oh, got him. <laughs> I caught one. I thought I was just wrapping up. I was just going to say goodbye. And all of a sudden, look at that. Woohoo! All right. Well, good. That was a good way to end it. Hey, buddy. Mwah. Thank you. Oh, there's one. There's a couple more down there. Let's go. Let's go try to get a couple more here. I was literally just going to wrap up, do the outro, say goodbye, and look down and there's a fish on the camera. He was a little hesitant, didn't want to bite it at first. There's, it keeps turning, I got to keep turning back to see him. All right, let's see if uh, he comes back for some more. Yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. I love it when you can see him because, you know, sometimes you sit there and jig and jig and you don't know if there's any fish down there, but as soon as you see him on camera, then you can kind of get serious and like, you can watch your reactions to things you do when you're bouncing it up and down. And uh, that one, he's a little scared of it, but when I held it still, that's when he went in for the grab. 
So I think we explored pretty much all the options I can think of for recording underwater video. It, uh, if you haven't, if you can't tell, it uh, frustrates the heck out of me. So uh, sometimes I feel like I'm the only one that's like got a problem with this. Uh, I'm really curious, uh, especially all you guys out there that are filming fishing videos, if you're having the same issues I am. Um, I don't know if you're actually recording underwater video or not, or if it's something you'd like to do, but I'm kind of curious what you do. If you have any other techniques that you do to get good underwater footage, I'm kind of at a loss here. This is, uh, this is what I came up with, and uh, I said I haven't actually went and looked at the video yet, so when I go home, I'll edit it, and I'll know for sure if it was worth it or not. But right now, it seems to be working fine on the aqua views here, attaching it the way I attached it. It goes down, doesn't fall off. Um, I'm not really sure. I got it in wide angle. I can uh, uh, play with different angles on there too to see what gives me the best view. I know the AquaView cameras are kind of a wide angle, so I just went with wide on the GoPro. And what I can see on my AquaView screen here, I'm kind of curious if it shows the same thing on the GoPro or if I have to like keep my bait a little bit lower down on the screen so the GoPro can see it too. Um, You've probably already seen that because if you're watching this video, I've already edited on there and you can kind of see where it, all this stuff is. And like I said earlier, I made a blog post on this with uh, much greater detail. If you're uh, considering doing something like this, it's at goldmidwestfishing.com forward slash underwater. Uh, you can look at that and a bunch of other articles I got on there. Plus I got a whole bunch of uh, lake reviews I'm doing and the library keeps growing. So keep coming back and looking at those because I'm hoping to have quite a few of them pretty soon. Well, I hope you found this helpful or at least entertaining. And like I said, I'm really curious if I'm the only one having an issue with this because no one I talk to seems to actually care. <laughs> but I know when I put this out on YouTube, I got a whole community out there doing the same thing I am, even if uh, people around me aren't doing this. So uh, if you got opinions, I'm sure I'll hear about it. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.